Oh. Oh, look, there's actually people watching. Nice. Well, we still got one minute to go. So I'm just gonna place the phone inside my running shoe. And then you should all be able to still hear me. Let's see. Thumbs up you can if you can hear me clearly. No thumbs up. Oh, 10 second delay. There we go. Any thumbs up? A wave. I'll take wave. I know. Oh, thank you, Liam. There he is. Perfect. Okay, I've got it. Thumbs up. Whoa, there's 1,400 people watching. That's crazy. Uh, let's have a look. Ooh, I wanted to invite somebody. There he is. At somebody in this live stream. Doesn't really work, does it? No, there he is. Should be. Should work. Oh, we're waiting for him. We're waiting for him. Should be coming. <laughs> there he is. Excellent. Live and direct from San Francisco. Very good. Live and direct from Nuremberg. How are you, mate? Not so bad. How about yourself? Coping, coping. I actually just applied some Tiger Balm. Um, and it smells choice in here right now. It smells absolutely sensational. I don't even want to know where you applied that. <laughs> you got to keep it real. I know. I Look know. at all these people joining. Awesome to see so many folks on. I know. What I didn't consider, actually, that if we are both in the live stream, like the screen is split. So Just move your phone don't... back a bit. Move your phone back a bit. There you go. All good, mate. All good. So for all the people joining, it's great to have so many of you guys on board. There's, yeah, I mean, there's so many messages coming through. So we're going to start in, yeah, a minute's time. Um, Alex suggested doing this taping workshop. He asked the followers if people wanted it, and people were very clear that they did want this. And on my travels with Alex, I was always impressed by the fastidious nature of his taping. And when he said he was going to do this, needed it, but <laughs> I was always impressed. And I said, "Hey, uh, let me come on this with you. I'm going to ask some questions, and I can help you because uh, all these folks that are asking questions, you can focus on your taping, and I can focus on them, and also tape along. Uh, hopefully, everybody saw your little memo about what you need to bring. Exactly. Uh, so, talk, let, quickly talk us through what you should have before we start taping. So, um. First thing, obviously, if you haven't got any cuts, it uh, doesn't really make any sense to tape, right? Right. So I brought this little scalp with me over here. Oh my god! Um, everybody's He's gonna slice your finger. Right now and slices. No, just joking. Just... You can't say that. <laughs> so to show you which uh, areas of the finger we'll tape, we will just take a pen and I'll mark a few. And let's say on the index finger, we'll just mark yeah. one on the tip. Yeah about here perfect and then on the middle finger we'll just mark one right in the crease in like the first oh, joint worst right. place yes exactly and you've I always had bad ones of them always i know i mean that's where i usually get my uh, and get mine and then obviously you've still got sometimes splits in like the second joint especially on the pinky back here mm, especially pockets. when it's Especially when you do dead hangs uh, on the Beast Maker Mid Ledge <laughs> with lots of additional weight. Perfect. Oh, that looks brilliant. So, um, and uh, I've always got this little uh, cosmetic kit with me. I call it my goodie bag. Mm. Uh, a little bag like that. Like this? There we go. And I'll just run you through what I've got in there. And um, obviously, I've got multiple rolls of tape in there, but the most important ingredient of tonight will be the tape and uh, I uh, always use this tape which is the Luca tape classic the wide one there's uh, as well uh, one that's a bit uh, smaller thinner but I always use the wide one but we'll get back to that later I think those should be the same with like yours yeah this is the Leica tape as well I actually realized I had one 
Yeah, there we go. Well, One quick question before we, we carry on. Go for um, it. Can we take this finger as if we were trying to isolate it and not use it because we had a pulley injury? So rather than taping for the actual pulley, tape for isolation. Can we do that with that one? Sure, we can try. Let's do it. Awesome. I think, because right. I think, I know people suffer with pulley injuries. It's a really common thing. And to just tape skin is great. And actually, like more people suffer with skin than pulley injuries, I'd say. But um, to be able to tape, to isolate a finger, I think it's pretty cool as well. I mean, I'm, okay, not, so a, we've got... I'm not a doctor or anything, but I did have a uh, few pulley injuries. So I, uh, I, like, I do know how to tape the uh, A2 pulley injury, uh, especially post rupture. But um, if you want, for all of you listening now that want more information about how to take specifically for certain injuries, yeah, on, uh, there is uh, on Falka Sheffield's website, and I think on the YouTube channel there is um, a few taping tutorials how to tape specifically for injuries. Like that could be, for example, pulley ruptures. That could be elbows, wrists, and so on and so on. So I think with a little bit of research, you'll be able to find something. Cool. But I'll as well show you how to tape like the very basic taping method of the A2 pulley when you've got a little bit of stress in the pulley or when you've uh, ruptured your pulley. Ideal. Okay, so we've got our tape. What else do we need? So I always bring like a tiny little brush and just in case I forget my brush. Important. Mm -hmm. I bring some hand cream, which is really important, I think, especially once you're done with climbing. It's sometimes like obviously because your skin is so dry from the chalk, it makes sense to have a hand cream ready. Sure. And I sometimes use hand cream as well while taping my splits for climbing, but I'll get back to that later. Okay. Obviously, uh, one of the most important things is a uh, nail clipper. I think everybody mm. knows, knows how to use those. And obviously, you need them for skin, for nails, and so on and so on. I sometimes Good. even flip away the end of my tape, for example. Yeah. Another important thing in my toolkit is super glue. Just because, um, especially when we tape um, this one, where the split is right on the very tip of the finger, super glue is important. I think we're not going to apply it tonight, but um, you'll get the idea of what I mean. And um, it'll just make sure that even if you've got a split on the very tip, and you tape the very tip of the finger, the skin, uh, uh, the tape stays in place. There's one thing to say about super glue is that it is pretty toxic. So whilst we might choose to use it, it's very much at your exactly. own choice. I mean, if you don't give us about health, then apply it. If um, it's definitely not the best thing, especially because as well it doesn't come off afterwards anymore. Yeah. But if you are desperately, but if you've got a project to send, exactly. If you're desperately wanting to send, and then another thing that I always have uh, in my bag with me is razor blade, and I use that just to uh, just to cut off uh, some dry skin or like cut off some uh, yeah like flappers on my skin. I think that is way better than um, using sandpaper because sandpaper is not very precise and uh, with uh, the razor blade you're actually able to literally cut off like super tiny bits of pieces of your skin and that just makes it way preciser than uh, just sandpaper. Um, Ellie Levine says drummers also use super glue. Interesting fact for you there. There we go. I reckon. Hi mum. I guess uh, drummers have got problems uh, holding the stick at some point. <laughs> yeah, maybe like friction or something. So um, one thing again as well on a safety front, I know it's probably goes without saying, but if you are going to choose to use one of these, you've got to be really careful because they're sharp as hell and we don't want to slice our fingers off. So use with caution um, if you are feeling confident and steady handed. Otherwise, just use something like this or a sandpaper block. Okay, cool, let's get into taping. We're at eight well. minutes in. Let's start you got there. All right, so we start with um, a uh, just a normal pulley injury or if you've got stress with a pulley. Whatever you want, mate, you're in charge. Let's do that. So then I usually take um, wider tape about this width. So yeah. if you want to see it in comparison to my finger, and this is how it looks like. It's not really a good comparison because you have fingers different to everybody else. That is very true, but I think it's about two and a half centimeters, two centimeters maybe. Good question. I reckon this is, yeah, it might be about two centimeters. Yeah. Yeah. That's uh, probably exactly two centimeters. You tape, you take off the tape, 
Yeah. About, let's say, 15 centimeters, so half a foot. Yeah. Like that. Six inches for all you it's imperial about measurements. Six inches, three stones, exactly. Three stones. <laughs> <laughs> then you start ripping the one side, but only about two centimeters. So like that. Yeah, okay. And then flip it upside down. Flip it. Should you flip reverse it? Take a little flip and then you start ripping from the other side the same way. Yeah. Almost the other rip. So it looks like an H like this. Feeling good about that? Awesome. Perfect. So then I think the most common pulley that people have problems with is the, the A2, which is yeah. on the very back here. So it's the very tip of the finger, like the first crease is the A4. The middle pulley, the middle knuckle, is uh, the A3. And the um, like the knuckle that is the closest to the base of your palm, that is uh, the A2. And then there's another A1 in the, in the palm that does not rupture very often, at least. Right. So um, my, uh, um, my common pulley ruptures were the pulley ruptures of the A2. So I had one in the pinky and one in the middle finger. And um, it seems a bit weird because you're actually taping where the A3 pulley is, but mm -hmm. you want to take off a um, load of the A2 by placing, so you see how you can rip this H tape. Yeah. The bit that's still connected, you put that right where the A3 pulley is, so right okay. in the middle knuckle. Yeah. And then you start taking the short ends. Yeah. Start wrapping them around your finger with quite a bit of tension, like this. Okay. And then what you keep doing is, when you take the long ends, like that. Yeah. And you make sure that this is wrapped around tightly, like that. And then you as well take this one, the last missing end. You bend yeah. your finger a little bit, and you put it under tension. You really pull on it to keep it under tension, and then you tape it like that. Okay. So in the end... Oh, I did the wrong one. So, you, know, you did it on the, on, the, on the A4. Yeah. You should have done the middle knuckle, so it looks like... I'm overtired. I'm overtired. I was like, wow, he's got really long end of his fingers, and then I'm like, no. No, he hasn't, Lonsdale. <laughs> Lonsdale's done it on the wrong one. I've been a bit tired. Look, they're all like, Liam, what are you doing? I know. Liam, so this is how it looks like from the bottom. This is how it looks like from the top. Okay, good. This is how it looks like from the side. And you can see actually that I can almost not straighten my finger anymore because yeah. there's quite a bit of tension on the tape, which then means that if you crimp your finger in this position, the tape actually helps the tendon. Oh, nice. So, yeah. I get it now. I'm catching up. I uh, I didn't get much sleep last night, as you already know, mate. <laughs> oh dear. So, uh, taping that round, and then with that last piece, you said put that under a bit of tension with it bent. Exactly. If uh, if folks are taping along as well, I'd love to see what people's fingers look like at the end of this. Maybe tag Alex in your stories, and uh, Alex, you can repost the best ones. Perfect. So you can as well see that uh, my finger is uh, I'm getting a tad bit blue. Yeah, yeah, you've done it tight. Normal. So, um, it That's like, the right it's, tightness? It is the right tightness. If it does turn like a tap bit purple, like it's not supposed to be completely blue. So not like this. Yeah. It's not supposed to be completely cold, but um, it usually happens that the tip of the finger is a bit colder. But um, after warming up, that should disappear. So if the finger is not warming up at all, even after a good warm up, then the tape is too tight. But okay. if you feel like after half an hour warm up, there's actually some blood flow coming to the tip of the finger, then it's fine. Quite a few people are asking, how long did it take for your pinky to heal? Uh, I mean, I could climb already a week past rupture, but I just climbed with three, three fingers. And um, I mean, even now, it's, I think, eight months or something. If I would do this under mm -hmm. tension, not warmed up, I would like still feel it a little bit. Interesting. So, 
it doesn't bother me while climbing, but I'm not taping it anymore for sure. quite a few months. Yeah. All okay, right. so yeah. we have our A2 pulley isolated. Exactly. Um, and if you want to find out more information, as you already said, Alex, um, Volker Scheufel uh, has all that on his website and on his YouTube. Exactly. So I think it should, be, um, it should be probably accessible on YouTube. I'm not 100% sure, but um, it should be accessible on YouTube. So if you find, uh, if you look around a little bit, you should be able to find it. Cool. Awesome. Okay. So we have our A2 done. Now we've got index tip, middle crease, first crease and pinky second crease. What should we do next? Exactly. Well, I kind of messed it up a little bit because I take my middle finger, but I just swap middle and uh, you deaf yeah. bugger. Doesn't matter. It's all good. <laughs> hey, so, question well, as well. Um, is that different to how you would tape an A1? I have actually never had an A1 pull your option. Good. Then we won't say anything about it. You can find information online. I guess so. And that is very true. Yeah. And I as well never had any A3 or A4 pull your option, so I can't really say anything to that. I think the best thing is to really consult a doctor, ideally Paul Schaeffel, because, uh, well, he's got already had already 20 pull in. How do you spell Schaeffel? C H O with an umlaut, F F L. C H O with an umlaut, F F L. Exactly. Right. right. I'm about to write Volker Schäufel in the chat. Somebody else has already written it as well, so you can see um, how you spell Volker Schäufel. Okay. Cool. So next finger. Pick a finger. Any finger. All right. I'm going to redraw my lines. Difficult one first uh, to uh, keep the attention eye of everybody. So <laughs> let's say if we want to tape. You, like you can hardly see it, but um, the split on the very tip of my finger. This is the worst one as well because, of course, when we're all out climbing and there's some great times and we get those splits, I, you know, I personally, until I learned how to take this from you, always felt like my climbing was done for a day, or two days maybe, because exactly. you just can't tape it and you feel weaker with the tape on. But you definitely have. Exactly. Really I do have a taping method. Obviously, it doesn't. It's not ideal, but it works quite well. So uh, yeah. this is usually where, as well, you super glue if it really needs to stay on. So mm -hmm. um, just imagine that wherever you put tape before you apply the tape, you apply super glue, then apply the tape, and then we continue. And then afterwards, you just give it five or ten minutes to dry, and you're ready to go. But um, okay, we're just gonna do this thing without super glue now. So um. This wide roll of tape over here, uh, it's, I think it is 3.75 centimeters wide. Mm -hmm. So that's almost four centimeters wide. Good maths. Thank you. So always strong in math. <laughs> yeah, no. and, Keep uh, going. I, I, um, I tear those into six stripes. So it's too hard to see now. But yeah. you can almost like you can see the yeah, yeah, I can see it on the bottom, especially. Yeah, exactly. So you and they are equidistant. Stripes. Hey, are they equidistant? Yes, they are. Okay, they're supposed to be. If they're not, then you did a shitty job. <laughs> okay, you are German. So then you tape just a tiny bit of tape, and that's maybe seven centimeters, six centimeters of that. Mm -hmm. And you rip it off, and then this piece of tape, you literally put over your tip, mm -hmm. like this. Like that? Ideally, you would have super glue underneath it, but if you don't have mm -hmm. super glue handy, then you just do the same thing without And just, sh where would you put the super glue? Show me. You would put the super glue exactly where you've got the tape, just underneath. Like Okay, so on the back end, on the front of the exactly. finger. Exactly. So ideally, you would put the super glue, yeah, like that, and yeah. then put the tape onto the super glue. And so essentially, you're just o just over the crease on the front. Yep. And just over the knuckle on the back. Exactly. Okay. Make sure cool. that, it's not, that the tape doesn't go further down than the second knuckle. That's mm. the only thing you have to pay attention to. Like it should be further than the first knuckle, but uh, not as far as the second knuckle. Somewhere in between here. Okay, cool. So glue all the way over, past this first crease, past on both sides. Next, then you let's go. The same width of strip. Yeah. And we 
Let's go backwards a little bit. Go on. Well, that's a big bet. How many rolls of tape do you go through a year? Probably like 15. What? So, this length can vary from... Just less than a meter, it looks like. So, um, I'll try to show you how long it is. It is pretty much from my chest. Just say how long it is. Why? How long is that? Is that like... Less than a meter. Less Just. Than, I would say it's probably like 70 or 80 centimeters. Maybe. Correct. Okay. At the beginning, you can always like take a bit more tape because you can always rip it off. But if it's too short, it's pain in the ass. Okay. So we take this. I for me, a good measurement is like I've got the roll of tape on my chest, and this. Cool. There you go. I think that's a good length. But then again, for somebody who's got small fingers, so. For most girls, you'll probably end up needing less, but that's something you'll figure out over time. For people with like fat sausage fingers, you might need more, and you might make you might have to make the stripes as well a bit thicker. So okay. then, what you do is you start with the very end of the tape. You yeah. Start with the very end of the tape. Yeah. Pretty much where the cut is. Okay. Did you put super glue on the cut? Well, you don't now. But um, if I would put super glue before applying the tape, I would literally put super glue all over my finger, like everywhere where there will be tape. Really? Okay, keep going. So you pretty much dump your finger in super glue and then you tape it up because it just sticks better. So what you then do is you wrap it around once, uh -huh. and this at the end will be hard to see, but I'll try to show you guys like that. Uh -huh. You have to come once from the top and then you go back, you cross it over again like that. Closer. So in the end, right, let me do one and then you'll be able to hopefully see it. So it should be crossed over like this. Wait a second. If I flip the camera real quick, you might be able to see it a little better. <laughs> like this. Uh, so one over, and then one down, and then one up, and then one down. Exactly. Okay. And we're crossing at the point of the injury? We're crossing, I normally finger. always, the crossing point will always be the bottom of the finger, yes. Mm. So okay. then, let's see if I can figure this out. Here we go. Uh, look mm -hmm. at that. It'll be dazzling. And then you start going again from the top, like that. Yeah. And then you cross it over again. Yeah like this. Oh, it looks good. I know, it does look gorgeous, doesn't it? And if you keep on doing that... Quite a few folks are asking if this is going to be online afterwards, mate. I guess it will be if I figure out how to put it online. I'll help him, don't worry, team. So yes, that means it will be online. <laughs> So, if you continue the whole taping process, uh -huh. in the end, you've got this pattern. All the way down, eh? All the way down. So, I always tape it until the second uh, joint of the finger. Okay. And Why is that? That is because um, usually when you grab holes, the edge of the hole will be somewhere between the first and the second uh, joint of the finger. And sure. if you only tape somewhere around that area, then normally the edge of the hole will always well, just rip the tape off pretty much. No, you're so fast at this. I know. I mean, just imagine you want to, you know, you have to tape five fingers every day. That just means that you have to be fast, otherwise there's no climbing time left. <laughs> 
and then again like um it will it will become better with more practice i mean obviously at the beginning it took me out it took me just to figure that out but um once you know how to do it it's uh yeah it's gonna be it's gonna be good cool so what you have to pay attention to is you only literally tape until the second knuckle not any further down so you sh still should be able to move your first um your like finger like that and you should still be able to bend it uh on the middle knuckle of the finger there we go with the if you've got too much tape make sure to rip it off at the top of the finger so the end is on top and not uh, at the bottom and there we go how did i do Look at that, that is a bobby dazzle, not bad. There we go. Got a bit of fluff in it, which is right annoying. Well, I mean, don't worry, <laughs> it'll, it'll go away while climbing. So um, the important thing is why people always tell me, well, how can you still climb if um, your finger is completely wrapped up? And they say, well, I can't bend my, like, my first joint of the finger, how am I still able to climb? Well. I would say in climbing you never actually have to bend the first joint of the finger because if you've got a mm -hmm. sloper your fingers are flat anyways if you've got a jug it doesn't matter and if you've got a crimp the finger will be like this right mm -hmm. so the first knuckle is straight so then it really does not really make a difference whether you are able to move the first knuckle or not make cool. sense and so this is for skin splits or for when you wear go like go through through the finger yes exactly cool. so awesome now, how, would, how are people doing with that did anybody did anybody have success i know some people are doing it i've already seen that people are doing it along nice i'm pretty I've pleased with salad that. fingers what's that supposed to mean uh it's a it's an old weird comic brilliant online like digital video comic style animated crazy it's weird watch it it's good okay keep going let's go all right pretty much for if you've got a I'll simulate a cut here since i did that wrong before so let's just pretend we've got a cut here yeah so i'm gonna do the middle off. finger on this one exactly and then you pretty much do the same technique as this one just without the stripe over the top so again oh. you tape your tape you uh, take about this time obviously you need less tape because you're starting not at the very tip of the finger mm -hmm. so you rip off the tape <laughs> this time about i would say two feet long doesn't have okay. to be more yeah that's plenty yeah and then you again start same way as on the index finger you start right where the cut is, right here. And have we used glue there? I normally don't use glue, and I feel like I don't really need glue. If you've got good tape, you don't need glue, even okay. even for pockets and stuff. Okay. What you can do is, if you've got one of those gushing open splits that are really, really painful, mm -hmm. you can add a tiny bit of cream right underneath the tape where the split is. Mm -hmm. So then I would literally, like that real quick, I would literally so put a bit of cream on. go and I would put a tiny bit of cream mm -hmm. right here, it has to be not very much, and I push it into the split a little bit, yeah. and then I start taping. That just means that it gets a little soft underneath the tape and then hopefully it won't start bleeding and it doesn't hurt as much. Yeah. So the moisture helps the, the skin regrowth. Exactly. And cool. then on this one, you pretty much do exactly the same thing as on your middle finger. You always cross over the tape like that. And then you can already see the cross pattern here. Mm -hmm. and this is so are you, you going just like up or down or what, which way are you going? I'm always going from the tip of the finger and down to the bottom of the finger. Okay. So that from the tip of the injury down. That seemed to be the better way around uh, out of experience. 
-hmm. and then there again you continue doing that how much overlap are you leaving between each wrap like millimeter two millimeters um probably more like three millimeters yes it's not okay. something you have to play around with and uh, figure that out too and then depends on the finger it always depends on the finger so i have uh, i have realized and i've um seen as well that if you've got thin fingers then my taping obviously is a bit off because i'm always used to tape my kind of finger sure. and, uh, and you, you do have tape, pretty fat fingers because i've got pretty fat fingers but um I have already taped fatter fingers and then my taping is off again. So um, I think it'll just take time uh, to get used to it. And then again, make sure that the tape ends up top. You rip it off. And Listen, mate, this is harder than the climbing itself. I know. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm doing it and then I'm like, oh no, my bollock's not right. <laughs> there we go. That one goes there. Nice. Looking Almost good. there. Almost there. <laughs> and so we're just going between the two knuckles again. Exactly. So you're still able like that to bend your finger. Uh-huh. And you're still able to crimp. Yeah. But obviously you can't bend your first knuckle anymore that much. Sure. Which doesn't really matter in my in my in my eyes. And so on the back part here. Plus, would you put a little dab of super glue on on there or not? It normally doesn't. It doesn't come off. So it's like the end, I never had the problem that the tape actually rolled off the finger, the way I put it on. So the only thing that happens sometimes if an edge catches straight away here, then it just like pulls mm -hmm. it off, especially when you've got pockets. And what I do have as well, very regularly in gyms, that the skin. And that the tape actually wears through like skin. So at some point you just get holes in the tape. And you just replace. So what I'm going to do, mate, just so anyone that missed where our injuries are, is draw on my tape where the injuries were. So, so this one was for a split at the end. Does that work for flappers as well? I mean, it works for flappers the same way. Yeah. I mean, obviously you have to cover normally a bigger surface area with flappers, but um, if the and tape then... covers all it, then it should be fine. This one's for the crease. Exactly. And then this one's for a A3 pulley injury. A2. A2. Good. See? Yeah. Keeping you on your toes. Now, <clears throat> I've just seen a few people asking, so maybe you just say it again, mate. Like, this tape wears through, like, yes. maybe on a go or on two goes. How would you just retape it exactly the same? Strip the tape off, wash your finger, go again. Um, it, um, so now uh, what, what you have to pay attention to is that. Um, your skin and the finger needs to be clean before you apply the tape. So if okay. um, your tape, or if your finger is full of uh, chalk, then you should clean it off somehow. Either wash it or, well, if you're outside, you obviously can't wash it, then you just go. Bit of water. There we go. There we go. And, Do you tear um, off the flapper as well, if it's a flapper? Um, it always depends. Um, I usually, if underneath it's not bleeding, I do tear off the flapper. If it's bleeding a lot underneath the flap, I would not tear it off. I would just glue it back on with the tape. Okay. Yeah. So let's Two. do our last one, the pinky. Yeah, exactly. Let's do um, the last one. So and, I'll um, show to the camera. Been, people have been saying, usually I uh, I retape if I'm trying something really hard, if I'm trying a hard route, then I retape after every try. But usually if I'm just going climbing or if I'm just having a session at the gym, I almost then have to retape at all for like the whole day. So if you uh, place, if you put on the tape quite well, it stays on for almost the whole day. Cool. And, um, yeah. Let's continue with the oh, third one, or the last That's one. That's pinky. That's pinky, the little pinky. I'm going to drop the phone again like that. So hey to everyone that's like... saying hello, by the way. You can say hello, mate. Go on, do a little hello. Hello. Who is it? I don't know. <laughs> so we again use uh, the same width of um, a of a stripe in your tape, this, and we take 
about I would say one and a half feet. Like that's like forty centimeters. That that should be enough. So it has actually not not super long. Okay. And then again we start at the crease of the finger, so at the mm -hmm. um, where the where you've got your cut here. Mm -hmm. and right there. And then you do again once the crossover like that mm -hmm. and then what you do is you swap sides and you actually tape around the other knuckle so if i got my pink like that you actually tape it around the other knuckle because the pinky finger you do have to be able to bend on your second joint so um what you have to do then is you have to make sure that there's up here a little bit of space between the tape so you can actually still bend it interesting and so then you take the crossover in exactly the same way with that gap exactly so what you do is i usually do one crossover once from the top and once from the bottom like this yeah and then i continue above the knuckle to do the crossover method again always paying attention though that there is a bit of a gap up here Cool. And then again, you rip it at the top of the finger, and there we go. I feel like that one's not quite as good for me, but I get the principle, which is the important part. Perfect, exactly. So this is how your taped up hand looks like, and you're ready to crush your project, I reckon. Hmm. Awesome. Okay, so um, for the last two minutes, if you want to ask any questions of Alex, of his taping, of his projects, of all of the good stuff, uh, then you've got two minutes to do that. And while those are coming in, I'm just going to show, because a few people are still asking, this is a bleeding tip, taping for a bleeding tip. This is for a split in the first crease. This is for an A2, A2 pulley rupture. And this is for a pinky crease. Um, we are going to try and figure out how to put this online, aren't we, Alex? So you will be able to review this and learn how to get the perfect taping skills. Show us your tape, mate. Who is there? People sending in tape. Very good. So I am, I'm trying to read through a few questions and um, mm. people have, asking, uh, have been asking, for example, about um, the finger cream. I usually like a cream that um, does not make your hands super fatty and super sweaty. So I use a Kletteretta because it just mm -hmm. uh, dries in quite quickly. And I feel like if I apply it in the morning, you can still go climbing, you know, an hour later. I mean, yeah. there's other tape, like obviously other creams that um, you can use too. And um, other things that uh, people have been asking is if I've got any projects. Well, of course I do have projects, but I guess uh, they have to wait for a little bit. We'll see. Somebody's been asking about cut, um, taping the thumb. So with the thumb, it kind of works a little bit like the, the pinky finger. So yeah, I just have to make sure that on top of the thumb here, when you apply some tape, you've still got a little bit of space, otherwise you won't be able to um, bend your thumb anymore. But I would say splits on the thumb are not very common. It rather is um, a split just because uh, it's dry outside in, uh, in, in winter, a lot of people get that. Mm -hmm. And um, well, that's... So there's as well another tip um, if you want to make sure that your splits heal for the next day, you have to apply some cream overnight and you have to tape it closed completely overnight. So you literally, it like has to be super moist. And people always think that wounds need air to heal. Well, for some reason, for cuts on the fingers, that doesn't apply. So I, if I've got a split on my crease, I usually have got this crease then taped up for about 23 hours every day. So um, I just make sure that it doesn't get air because on the air it dries out and as soon as you straighten your finger cracks again. So just make sure if you've got um, splits in the creases or splits anywhere, apply some tape, apply some cream, tape it up and leave it like that overnight until you go climbing. And uh, when you are at the climbing area, you take off the tape that you had overnight and you apply the climbing tape, still on the moist skin. And uh, 
you do that 10 days and it's gone. <laughs> awesome. Oh, so, Miguel. there he is. I awesome. saw that. What an absolute <laughs> lad. What a hero. Some oh. corn water with Tabasco for that guy. Um, so I think that pretty much finishes, mate. If you want to maybe do one more question. We're like 40 minutes now, so it's long old... Wow. Somebody has Same. been asking how, um, two, two questions, like some people have been asking me about anti-hydro. I don't use it, but um, I think that's as well one of those like tricky things. If you know how to use it and you know how your skin reacts, it can be beneficial for climbing. Yeah, I use it I would, and it's amazing for me. Yeah, I would make sure, especially if you've got dry skin, to not to avoid using it. And another thing, somebody asked, uh, how do I get the super glue off the finger once uh, I've applied it and I've taken off the tape? So very often if you apply tape with super glue and you take off the tape, the super glue stays on the finger. And then you either like try to peel it off with your fingernails or you can very carefully try to actually cut it off with, uh, with a razor blade. It does work to some extent. But as always, uh, climbing is a dangerous sport, so take care. <laughs> so what I'd say then, mate, is for anyone that is watching now, I see quite a lot of questions that we've already covered earlier in the video. Just to remind people, we are going to try and figure out how to put this up either on YouTube or on Alex's IGTV. It'll definitely be live for the next 24 hours so you can watch back. There are no questions that I'm seeing that are unanswered, so that's good. Um, mate, thank you so much for this. I feel like once this whole lockdown scenario is over, uh, my baby soft skin is going to be punished, and this is, I'm going to be gone through these in a week. Um, oh, yes, you will. But yeah, that, that was super helpful. I hope everybody that watched this found it equally as helpful. Um, yeah, I'm going to finish my carrot. I'm going to finish my yacht tea, but remember, decaf after six. <laughs>